This is a workshop that we conducted at uh, Antonio Garcia Center. This entire process begins first with uh, these scratch blocks, we like to call them, and they're resin sand, a foundry sand uh, process that uh, our students make in wooden molds. Pack the sand in and then shake them out after they're uh, cured, and out pops these tablets that the students are then given um, to carve their designs in. Here you see uh, the very beginning stages. And they use a variety of different types of uh, tools, anything from screwdrivers to files to pocket knives, spoons, anything that'll make a mark will carve into the sand. And here the students are refining their, uh, kind of just to advise them uh, in terms of not to carve all the way through, uh, perhaps to show them some techniques. It's really important for our students at the university to participate in this. Here I am looking over some of the patterns and giving some advice. Uh, the biggest worry that, that I have in this process, if, if the students carve all the way through, then of course the, the metal runs through the patterns. Here one of my students is applying uh, a graphite wash, and it's graphite with denatured alcohol, and the purpose of this is to allow the aluminum to uh, dance across the surface of that scratch block pattern without washing or eroding into the sand. And uh, once they're coated, then uh, the alcohol is ignited, and as it burns away, it embeds the, the uh, surface with the graphite. And here they are in the pouring line, getting ready to receive the aluminum. Here we are lighting the furnace. Uh, this is a furnace that I had built uh, with several grants. Uh, from the, the state as well, from the as well as the Arts and Cultural Commission, and I built this entire facility for this specific purpose of taking it on the road. Here, the aluminum ingots are being preheated. Students continue with their carving. This is kind of a great social event for the kids too, because they can chat and kind of relax, get some out of the classroom, which they really love, get some outdoors. It's a great inter interaction between their instructors and, and our students. And so here we are loading the, uh, the furnace with the aluminum ingots. Inside that furnace is a vessel that we, we take out once it's full. The metal is melted in that vessel. It's called a crucible, made out of silicon carbide, a very uh, a high refractory, heat resistant material. As it starts to melt, we check it periodically to see that if there are any lumps that, that inside the melt itself, we want to make sure that everything is completely, completely molten. Here the student is uh, leveling off the, uh, the bird pattern that I've cast for uh, uh, the fundraising event. And here comes the crucible out of the furnace. And we're prepping it, and getting ready to pour. Any impurities that arise to the surface are then skimmed off. And then we, we start pouring into the, to the mold. Now the pattern for this was made out of styrofoam for the actual bird form itself. And so as the metal burns away the styrofoam, uh, the aluminum displaces that form and it takes on all the, uh, all the information that the foam had. So once the styrofoam pattern was cast, here we are starting to cast the scratch blocks. And we try to be as neat as possible in terms of uh, filling up these blocks. Everything is leveled off on the uh, uh, the stands that hold hold these blocks. It's important that uh, that these scratch block molds are level, so that the uh, tiles are going to remain flat and even. And we just proceed with this process all the way down to the end of the pour line until everything is filled. And then any excess aluminum is poured into that pig mold 
and why it's a pig is in industry they call them pigs, ingots. Here we are shaking out the cooled patterns. And even though they're, they are sitting on the uh, concrete, they're still very, very hot. So after this process, then uh, we take them to the quench tank and quench them in cold water. Here's one of my students doing that very same task. Here I am shaking out the, uh, the pattern from the mold material. The resin sand mold is a very, uh, very hard mold material. Once the aluminum comes in contact with that sand mold, it becomes even harder. And so you literally have to carve it out, carve out the casting. Some images of the scratch blocks sitting in the uh, grass after they've been cooled, awaiting any kind of cleanup that, that may be required. Students inspecting some of the headgear, safety gear. So the next step here, you see the students starting to buff the surfaces, removing any of the fire scale as a result of uh, the metal coming in contact with the uh, graphite surface. And we try to clean them up as best as possible for the students to take home. Any uh, shapes that are irregular, we try to grind away with the, uh, with the grinder, with the cutoff wheel. Any sharp edges, we try to file away and soften for the students. There's a finished piece. The kids can then take these home and do a number of things with them in terms of finishes. All right, here's the bird form after it's been taken out of the resin sand mold, you can see the plumbing system by which the metal is flowing into the pattern. These are called sprues and gates. All this gets cut off and then the bird form becomes polished. You get a better shot of what, what the, the casting looks like after it's shaken out of the mold. Found is better is a very uh, labor intensive process and this gives you just uh, a brief idea a glimpse into what that entails.